Rapid intensification, that's what the models are showing, and a Category 4 is on the table with Aaron. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, keeping you updated on all things Aaron as we track that. Another Gulf sneaky system and a new area NOAA is now highlighting deeper into the Atlantic for later this week into the next week. We got a lot to talk about here, folks. You can see Aaron making that pass by the Outer Banks with it comes the potential for some intense waves. In fact, some of the modeling that I'm seeing showing record breaking. We're talking 60, 70 foot waves on our GFS modeling. Folks, that is intense on the right side of this core. And even though this is several hundred miles offshore of the East Coast, that's going to generate some intense rip currents. Also, some really high surf from Florida to Georgia to the Carolinas up through the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Let me show you what I'm watching right now. So the new European model has stopped that trend west and it's parked it. Now, where it did yesterday, we certainly had a big shift to the west that sent this thing from east of Bermuda to uh, closer to the Outer Banks. At least it's not brushing up against the United States anymore, but a close pass of a major Category 4 like this does a lot. Now the hurricane hunters have been flying around in this, got new data on that. What they do is they get inside this storm, crisscross it to dissect the winds, find the worst part of the storm, and try to see where it's going. Now what this does, the better part of other than just giving us current conditions to see what it is, is all this feeds data into our computer models, giving it a new center of circulation, a new intensity. So when we move forward from here, we know that we can have a little more trust in the modeling because it's going off of the freshest data absolutely possible. These, uh, you know, big planes that fly in have radars on them. Now they're getting all kind of data to feed this. And you can see on the satellite, this thing is looking extra, extra strong tonight, getting a lot more organized. And tomorrow through Saturday, this thing's going to undergo what we call rapid intensification, where it bombs out its pressure and becomes intense very, very quickly. So where is it going? Uh, the official National Hurricane Center track has this as a Cat 3. The models are showing Cat 4. Now, the National Hurricane Center track uh, has only been within five miles per hour away of, you know, that Cat 4 strength. Now, I'm a big fan of these ensemble modeling, and in this case, you've got all of them plotted here on one map. They're in great agreement. You've got the European, you've got the GFS, you've got the Canadian, all showing west of Bermuda, but e safe enough to the east of Cape Hatteras to not have a direct hit. But in any case, this is a big system getting closer to land. Uh, as you look at the trends here, we have had a trend toward the west uh, with the ensembles here over the past uh, four runs or so, uh, but it's not a dramatic going to make landfall trend. It's still curving around that big Bermuda high. So I think we're, we're becoming a lot more confident that this is not going to make landfall in Florida. Does it brush up against the Carolinas? That still needs to be ironed out, but we're getting more confident each modeling data that comes through. Here's the new uh, model data from all of our tropical models. Still a pretty good spread here, but even the farthest west track is plenty safe of the Bahamas. Now, I mean, this is where the center would be if it's that far west, so you'd have impacts far west, but it wouldn't be a direct hit. All right, does that make sense? Let's look at the modeling data. Here's the European model. Sends it between the Turks and Caicos and Bermuda. I mean, that is a close call, and with it being so close to Puerto Rico, uh, the northern part of the island chain here. I mean, tropical storm force winds will be present in the Lesser Antilles all the way to Puerto Rico through uh, the Dominican Republic. Then it chugs to the west, gets very close to Turks and Caicos, uh, gets up here uh, toward the Outer Banks. There's the 12Z run. Here's the 18Z run. Uh, and let's look over here at the AI version. AI pretty much in the same location. So we have some good modeling consistency here. Uh, how about secondary system number two? Uh, AI Euro shows a little something trying to crop up here after it. We're getting deeper into the forecast period here, but toward the end of the month, that would match up with some of the modeling data that's been earlier for the European and a little something else trying to form. And it also originates back here toward the Cape Verde Islands, very close to where Aaron originated. Little wave tracks to the west, 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 but it's farther south. And in this case, the European AI takes it like that. The European operational run uh, has that secondary system 
uh, actually following the identical path of Aaron. So here it is. Here comes Aaron. That secondary wave coming in like that. It's weak and gets absorbed. Uh, it doesn't really become anything on the Euro uh, operational run. Here's a closer look at the Euro AI. 950 millibar low right there. That would keep some significant wind just offshore. Look at that. You still got 35 to 40 mile per hour winds off Cape Hatteras. This would be Wednesday. So we need to start talking about timing here, folks. So this would be Wednesday passing up here. You got uh, parts of Massachusetts. Uh, Boston could have 45 mile per hour winds uh, because of how close it gets to Boston. Uh, let's look at the operational European. Let's flip it back to the 12Z run. I mean, you got 37 mile per hour winds for Boston. I mean, this is some pretty significant wind. I've got a 52 mile per hour wind on the regular European. Uh, and to flip this back two runs, pretty close data there. I mean, almost an identical wind speed for Cape Hatteras. So tropical storm force conditions do get to the United States, but the core of the worst part of the system is just offshore. But impacts, folks, let's talk impacts, all right? If we get down here toward the Caribbean, that's where I want to start with this because as we look at some of those impacts for our friends in the Caribbean, I mean, we're going to be talking about some of those winds starting to pick up in areas like Barbuda, Puerto Rico. I mean, we're talking about some pretty gusty winds um, within 48 hours as we map this out, model it out closer right here. The core of that system getting in there right there. So, I mean, you've got, again, 35 to 40 mile per hour gusts right there. Puerto Rico getting up into the 30 mile per hour. So it goes just north of Puerto Rico. Uh, as we look at the Euro AI, uh, how close it gets to the United States. Looks like Cape Hatteras could have the peak winds in some of our U.S. territories. But I want to talk about the wave heights for a second, folks. Uh, almost breaking our key right here. Here's the GFS modeling right in there. Just maxes out our key here of 48-foot high waves. Some of the raw data I've seen has shown 68 to 72-foot waves. Can you imagine a seven-story building above you waves? I mean, it's like day after tomorrow movie-type waves. I mean, that just makes my stomach kind of churn thinking about it. Um, so looking closer at that, there's already been at least one cruise line that has altered our itineraries as they do in these type storm systems. Not uncommon, but um, yeah, getting nowhere, nowhere near that. So the thought is the rip current, which by the way, is a, a big weather killer each year. The rip current will be very strong from Florida up through New England going into this upcoming week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Here are the European ensemble tracks just to show you a trend. Here's the one from before. Here's the latest. So a slight jog to the west. I don't think it's a great jog, but it is something to watch. Let's look at the GFS ensemble. There's the most recent one. Here's the one before it. Yeah, it's been a jog to the west. One before that. So not a huge swing, but enough of a swing here. And this new GFS ensemble is interesting. There's the operational run. There are a lot of runs that do get closer to the United States. So the thought is, could this get even closer to the U.S.? Absolutely. Uh, GFS operational run continuously shows a 937, folks. That's close to Cat 5, and it just kind of holds steady right there. I mean, that would be that would be just a devastating storm. Thankfully, out to sea. But let's look at these uh, wind swath. Look at that. Oh, thankfully the worst of that would be just west of Bermuda as well. But my word, that is a significant storm right there. And as we look closer at it, uh, we're going to see that continue to move on through. Uh, GFS ensembles look like this. You do have a little more of a spread when it gets up here. So more of the GFS models doing what the European did yesterday at trying to show this thing go a little bit more to the west toward the Carolina coastline. European ensemble kind of right there with it as well. And there's a big spread. So the fact is, folks, we have a, a major hurricane that's going to be moving close to the southeast coast and it could brush up against or get very close to the east coast. And the timing would be 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday's time frame from Florida, Georgia to the Carolinas there as it makes that turn. Sunday into Monday is that time we need it to start making the turn. So folks, uh, please continue to stay tuned as we give you updates. And of course, if you're new to this channel, uh, you can follow along for updates, subscribe to this channel, and comment in the comment section where you're watching from. That's a good way to keep me up to date with where you're watching from as we can tailor these videos a little bit uh, more clearly to where you're watching from. We sure appreciate you being here and stay tuned.